Setting up upper lateral incisor space orthodontically for implants uh, can sometimes be very challenging. The topic of my short presentation today is orthodontic setup for upper lateral incisor implant. My name is Jeffrey Miller. I graduated from Towson University, received my dental education from University of Maryland, my orthodontic certificate from SUNY Buffalo, my board certification in 1991. I've been in private practice in Maryland for 34 years. I'm a member of the Golden Circle of Excellence through 3M and I speak on cone beam CT topics related to orthodontics. When we take a look at upper lateral incisor implant placement, the interradicular width is uh, mission critical to placing the implants. Generally, orthodontically speaking, it's not difficult to obtain proper clinical crown width, but sometimes it can get challenging for the orthodontist to make enough space within the uh, interradicular area. Depending on the inclination of the anterior upper anterior teeth uh, can make the job more challenging. If the upper incisors uh, as a group are more upright, then generally this, these cases are not a problem in placing implants. But the further uh, the tooth is proclined, uh, the more difficult uh, it would be to make room for an implant. In a case like this where the incisors are more proclined, uh, these cases become more challenging. And it's not a matter of just torquing these teeth to make them mimic this more upright position because the bone anatomy generally fo follows the contours of those teeth. Here are three different patients uh, with three different bone contours. Obviously this patient on the far right would be a much more difficult patient to make interradicular space for the upper lateral incisor implant. And the reason that these patients with the more procumbent incisors and bone anatomy are uh, more difficult is uh, very much like an umbrella. When you open an umbrella, you can get uh, all the space at the end, but the area around the apex or here in the hinge it really doesn't change that much. In other words, the area for the crown can be opened, but if it's a flared tooth, they're really not going to change that significantly in the area by the apex. Here you can see where the central incisor and the upper cuspid are superimposed over the umbrella frame. You can see that the clinical crown space can be opened fairly easily, but the interradicular space by the apex of the roots really doesn't change that much. And it has to do with the inclination of those teeth. For example, if we take a patient with a good uh, skeletal class one relationship and normal inclinations to the upper anterior teeth, uh, these cases lend themselves much better to having proper space for the implants because the, the clinical crowns uh, space is similar to the width between uh, the roots. In this case, where the skeleton is more of a class 3 relationship, the upper incisors are compensated by flaring forward, which is what you normally would expect. In these types of cases, finding interradicular space for an implant becomes more challenging because like the umbrella, the apexes of the roots are in closer proximity. So finding the space for the clinical crown is not as challenging as actually finding space uh, in the interverticular area. My advice would be uh, when treatment planning uh, cases to set up for implants on the upper lateral incisors, uh, the practitioner really needs to be mindful of the inclination of the upper incisors and the cuspid, which is usually correlates with the skeletal relationship in most cases. Not in all, but in most cases. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me at uh, drmiller at orthodonticassoc.com. Thank you very much.